Hi there, Asma. So let's take a look at this set of essays um, about fathers staying home with children while mothers go out and work. Let's see what you wrote, okay? In recent times, many fathers... Mm, careful with your tense here. In recent times, it doesn't really go with the present continuous. So let's try something different here. In recent times, many fathers um, have chosen or have been choosing that would be more appropriate than this are choosing, okay? Whenever you use a time marker, it's really important that you know which tense it actually um, belongs to. So, um, because it is pretty important when you use certain time markers, not certain, but when you use all time markers, you pretty much obligate yourself to use a particular tense. So it's important to become familiar with which time markers belong to which tense. So, in recent times, many fathers um, have begun choosing, maybe that's how I would have said it, have begun choosing to stay at, no, to be stay-at-home dad, sorry, while their wives pursue their careers. There are several reasons for this, and I personally believe that it is a positive trend. That's a great, clear sentence, very good. There is ample evidence that traditional, careful here, and look, you've got a noun, so all you need to describe it is an adjective. You don't need an adverb. So it should be traditional, not traditionally. So there is ample evidence that traditional roles, such as cooking, cleaning, and taking care of the children, have recently gone to men, whereas mothers have become the breadwinners. The central reason behind this is twofold. Firstly, over the last two decades, women have become educated and they pursued good careers. Secondly, in most cases, they can earn considerably high income. For this reason, mothers and fathers can decide as a family that the person with a higher income should go out to work. For example, recent empirical research by the UK government demonstrated that females who had a higher paying job were the breadwinners of their household. Let me see something here. Okay, therefore, it is conclusively that fathers and mothers choose these roles for the benefit of their family. Okay, this is fine, Asma. Um, you can see that I didn't have to correct any of the grammar. I thought you did a, a good job of it in general. Um, I might have wanted, if if I had to like have a, a wish list, I might have wanted a little more development, a little more depth to your answer. So I thought everything was really good and it was pretty textbook in, in, in terms of the way you organized it and everything. But since you've gotten this all down really well, I'd also like you to extend it just maybe a lit, little bit further. So let's see. <laughs> and this is of course, because I know if we're aiming for like a really high score, then something like that is going to be necessary. Um, you did a good job in terms of developing, but let's see where you could have potentially said maybe just an, an extra sentence more. Okay, I did locate one place. So here you've got this firstly, you said that women have become more educated. And then you say, secondly, they earn a higher income. So because of that, they decide that the person who makes more money should go out to work. And then you say, hear about this example with the UK government. There was something about these two sentences that really just left me wanting a little bit more. Now, again, I just want to really clarify for you that we're talking about a detail here because the paragraph was really quite good. But um, we're talking about the difference between a good essay and a really good essay. So for me, I thought there should have been an extra sentence here. First of all, I don't really think that this was a secondly back if we if we just kind of move back a little bit for me it should have been as a result in most cases they can earn considerably a considerably high income okay so it's not really a secondly here i thought these two things were rather um attached to each other okay um and then the person with the higher income should go out to work and in many cases nowadays this is the mother. So you could have just added that little detail. But the thing is, is that you also didn't talk about why the father is staying home. So yeah, you said that the women are working and the women are working, but what about the father? I mean, because think about it this way. If the mother is making money and you know, the father presumably is too, well then why not just hire a nanny? Okay. So 
do you understand what I'm saying? So maybe you could have talked about why the men are staying home. I think that's what was missing for me. So you really just focused on why women are going to work and why women are working and, you know, because women are making all this money, then men are staying home. Yeah, but I don't think that's really the whole picture here. Do you know what I mean? Because, um, take a look at the task. It's not just about the women going out to work. It's these days men are staying home. So why would they choose to do this when they could potentially outsource child care to other people? So why are they choosing to stay? All right. And that's something I think that you could have maybe added. Maybe that's in the end what was really missing from all of this. And so you should have addressed it a little bit. Okay. All right. So I'm glad we talked that out and we figured out what was really missing from this, but it was a well-written, uh, a well-written paragraph. Okay. Let's move on. Although there is a case for the reasons why mothers are the breadwinners, or again, you're not talking about the fathers, the positive impact it has on society cannot be overstated. This is largely because it has helped to promote and uphold equality rights. Well, it's not equality rights. The expression is equal rights across the country. Okay. For example, in the past, women were told to stay at home, and these roles, such as going out in the work field, were historically held by men. And, okay, we don't start sentences with and. Be careful here. So, you could have said also by allowing women to go out to work and seek their dream careers. Mm, careful. Also, allowing women to go out and seek their dream careers has proved to the modern society that both genders have the same equal rights and opportunities. All right, I kind of feel this is a little redundant here. You just talked about equal rights and opportunities. Consequently, consequently it is possible to stay beyond doubt that the beneficial effect this has in society is tremendous. Okay, again, why don't you talk about the rights of men a little bit, okay? So just like women are now able to go out and work, what about the options that this whole thing has afforded men? It used to be that men, whether they wanted to or not, had to be the breadwinner. But now, with this change and this shift in mentality, you know, men don't have to necessarily be the breadwinner. They can say, you know what, I really believe that. As a father, I prefer to stay home with my children, and this is the appropriate lifestyle for me and for my family. So I would have liked to see you focus a little bit on the men as well, okay, and their decisions to stay home with the children, because definitely you've neglected this throughout the entire essay, okay? All right, let's move on. To conclude in the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that mothers who are choosing to go out to work and be the breadwinners, hmm, careful with this. Ah, uh, that mothers is, you can't really say that. Let's see. I firmly believe that mothers who are choosing to go out to work and be the breadwinners is not only beneficial. All right. That's all right. Uh, it's not only beneficial for the family, but it is also beneficial for society. Okay, fine. So asthma, I think that um, we've definitely pinpointed where this essay is missing. I thought it was lovely in many areas. I thought a lot of the language was super, super um, appropriate and natural, and I was really rather happy with all of it. But you did definitely neglect the idea of men here and the role of men. You really just focused on women's rights and women's issues and all of that. And that's only part of the picture. You were also supposed to talk about men here and why they are staying at home. Okay. So, um, this would probably have some sort of an impact on your task response score. Uh, I don't think it would be huge, but it would certainly keep you from getting one of those like really high scores. All right. So keep that in mind and, um, try to develop all the sides of the argument. So not only women, but also men. Okay, let's see what you wrote to these movers. This looks a little small, so I want to just check your word count really briefly. Let's see. Yep, it's 140 words. Um, as you know, there is no official word count. There is no official word minimum, I should say. But it, it's a general rule of thumb that it's going to be difficult to get a good score with under 150 words. Okay. So it's more of a guideline nowadays than it is like an official, um, you know, word minimum. Okay. So keep that in mind and try to keep this above 150 if possible. So 
Ah, dear sir, madam, I am writing to complain about a recent incident that took place. I have recently used your moving vehicle service to help me move my household items to my new place. Unfortunately, all of my items have been damaged in transfer. The incident happened three days ago, and it took place in London, Camden Town. I wish to complain about your moving vehicle service that I purchased. We didn't really purchase a... I guess you did. We purchased a service. That's fine. On this date... I am complaining because I trusted your company with my household items and you assured me that they will deliver the items undamaged. However, the promises that were made to me have been broken and my items were damaged on the road. Now, this needs to be developed a little further. It's just very vague. My items were damaged. Okay, well, explain to us what the damage is. Explain to us what broke. Explain to us what has been um damaged or destroyed or whatever so it's all very theoretical and a little vague and so you should have gone into a little more detail about this okay and then it would have been really easy for you to hit that 150 word minimum so you could have said something like for example i have an antique armoire um that was scratched um and cannot be replaced or and it cannot be fixed or it left a big dent or it broke up leg or I don't know okay so you could have just provided some details about that to resolve this problem I would like you to pay for the cost of my items that have been damaged please transfer the funds to the account number supplied now even this is a little vague how are these people supposed to transfer funds when you never told them what items were damaged you never told them the value of the items damaged um, so we're really missing some important information here Okay, um, so that's, that's essentially the problem. For me, it's a little bit of detail. It's a little bit of task achievement, and you needed to just add a little extra to that to really make this a plausible letter. And, uh, of course, you know, to get to that word, that suggested word minimum as well. Okay, but you can see that it doesn't really make sense. Like we're missing some some uh, elements here to make this um, convincing. All right, Asma. So the good news is is that your writing, your the the language of your writing, is really really very good. We've talked about this before, and you know that. But we do have to deal with some of those other things that um, keep presenting an issue, like task achievement. Okay, so go ahead, correct them, and um, let's see another set of essays from you. I'll um, be looking forward to them. So good luck.